bit of time to connect but i think we can pray and uh, get started so i uh, would like to invite someone to please lead us in prayer today elisha would you be able to pray this morning yeah please thank you Once again, this morning, for a beautiful life you have bestowed on us, Lord, we pray, commit our class to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Continue to let your glory shine on us. Continue to lead us in the path of understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. Father, we pray, commit our facilitator or our teacher, us up to your hands. We pray that Lord, you grant her grace. So that life may flow out of her unto us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Commit all other members of the class to you. That we pray for your grace to understand. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for an answered prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Elijah. All right, so we've been studying about the different kinds of prayers. Uh, we will continue with that. We have touched upon a couple of them so far, and we have a few more to uh, complete today. So mostly we will um, just stick on to chapter five, I think, and then tomorrow we will move to the next chapter. So different kinds of prayers. We saw how um, we are told in scripture that we can pray with all kinds of prayers and the category of uh, prayer uh, we we looked at how scriptures talk about supplications intercession thanksgiving uh, and of course there are many others that that will be included and we will talk about them today so we uh, touched on the common types of prayers which we are used to one would be that of asking and receiving where jesus told us to just reach out to him in the name of jesus uh, and uh, with faith and we we will see answers to our prayer so asking and receiving you know that's something we've seen prayer of supplication where we earnestly call upon god um, for something to take place or for us to receive uh, from what God has already provided for us. So those are prayers of supplication where we seek after God and we also ask for you know, his mercy. Now we know that Jesus practiced all these kinds of prayers, asking and receive, you know, Father, I know that you hear me. Uh, and, you know, he, he goes ahead and he asks for Lazarus uh, to be raised from the dead. And that actually happens. Prayers of supplication where, you know, he, he uh, prays to God. We know that he spent a lot of time in prayer, right? Like he would go early morning. He would... Uh, set aside time, uh, be away from the disciples, go away on a mountain or be in the wilderness. So obviously there was a lot of time that he had and, you know, prayers of supplication where he could have prayed for God's mercy over um, the people, where he could have prayed for God's mercy over the disciples. We have the prayers of Jesus when you uh, read from John 14, you know, the prayers that he prayed for the believers. So many prayers are recorded. So supplication, there could have been so many different supplications that he actually had. Uh, but the one prominent one we know, you know, with vehement cries and supplications, it, it says uh, at the time, particularly closer to his trial you know he was crying out to god for his strength for also at at some point for that to be taken away from him and all of that so earnestly seeking god crying out to god for god to work uh, in jesus's life he definitely did that and this is applicable to us many uh, seasons of our lives where we uh, you know could be pleading to the lord for uh, healing in our lives or we could be pleading uh, to the Lord for uh, deliverance in a certain uh, situation that we are going through or even for guidance and direction uh, for our future. So we could earnestly be uh, supplicating or calling upon crying unto the Lord. Now we will 
quickly look at what other things we covered we said intercession you know intercession means to stand in the gap for somebody else uh, and how is it helpful when people are going through uh, difficulties it's you know uh, uh, we we saw job's example how he says that i wish there was somebody who would plead the case on my behalf so uh, it is useful for us to pray for someone right when they're going through a uh, difficult time and intercession is to be made for all people uh, we saw how uh, in uh, first timothy 2:1 we are told intercession to be made for all people and especially uh, for people in authority so we can pray for others so what kind of intercession uh, intercessory prayers can we pray we will look at it in depth later because we have an entire chapter on intercession but for now just know that whatever people's needs are so when we are interceding for our leaders we may want to pray for god's wisdom upon them god to impart knowledge to them grant them understanding god's favor god's protection uh, right uh, we could uh, what else can what else can we ask for our leaders while we intercede for them Um, we can ask for the godly leadership. Okay, godly leadership. Yeah, good, good one, uh, Sitkenu. So, so that they will lead as per God's heart, isn't it? As per God's word. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, correct. And setting the the right uh, godly example before us, that is also something we can pray for our leaders. Now, intercession uh, for other people, for people in need. uh now i remember one particular incident where some friends of ours uh you know they they were going through a rough patch uh and uh, at that point so many people were praying for them uh and after they came through the season i met with the, uh, it's actually a couple okay i met with the lady and i was just talking to her and asking her how are you doing now you know now that things are better how do you feel so she was sharing her experience she was sharing her testimony and she also told me that uh the the uh, months when they were going through the difficult time uh she shared about how she was unable to pray even okay but the consolation she had at that time when she did not have words to pray she did not have uh, her mind was not clear enough to pray uh, and she did not have the energy to pray she told me i was so sure that all of you were praying for me at that time you know and that's when i i was so touched and i thought lord you know i never knew people can go through challenges uh, in such a way that they they are really uh, trusting that others would be praying for them and what if others are not praying for them right so this is at least something that we can do to serve our brothers and sisters is to just earnestly pray for them okay uh, and know that god is working when we pray for them and uh, that really opened up my eyes to the fact that intercession is so important it can strengthen uh, those who may be feeling weak for whatever reason okay because of what they are going through so it's a privilege that god has given us and that's a kind of prayer which we can pray for others uh, and and uh, it's a blessing right to others and i'm uh, certain like even from my life i can share so many uh, incidents when uh, somebody was praying for me and that meant a lot uh, in terms of strengthening my heart uh, and uh, not just that for for me to be able to get through that season uh, even though i was praying you know i knew that additional prayers were always such a great help uh in those times of need okay so intercession it's a very beautiful we can pray for others uh, and uh, it, it's a blessing when others uphold us and they pray for us so that's uh, another kind of prayer that we can engage in prayer of thanksgiving we touched on this uh, as well briefly and we said that you know in a a prayer uh, we do begin to worship the lord and we adore him we exalt him we we give him the honor which is due to our god okay uh, and that becomes a prayer of 
adoration a prayer of thanksgiving for who he is see uh, uh, even if i mean i think this to myself even if god does not do one additional thing for me he's still worthy to be praised because of who he is right and not just that when we consider the work of the cross romans 8:32 it says that uh, uh, he who has given his only son will he not give us you know all other things that we need uh, for our lives so the best is already given in christ jesus for us so we have we have something to honor the lord for you know forever uh, so it's already he's already worthy he's already great he's already uh, uh, you know uh, the one who uh, is our helper who he has provided our salvation and we can give him thanks for that but in addition to that you know we see that god's goodness uh, is never ending in our lives so so many things that we can praise and thank god for as we come to him in prayer we could just say like lord i thank you for my family lord i thank you uh, for your protection upon our lives lord i thank you for the provision which we have uh, in every aspect of our life lord i thank you for the guidance which you have given me lord uh, i thank you for health and strength you know uh, and, and i mean for me it, that's a huge thing because uh, Uh, at some point actually uh okay maybe i'll just share it yeah so my mom uh, was diagnosed with a uh, terminal illness and uh, towards the last few days of her life you know we saw how uh, just to feel normal and be pain free she was struggling you know and and at that point the only prayer we, we we had was let her be comfortable you know let her not have pain so uh, uh, but yeah you know god ministered to us in a wonderful way during that time as well uh, and uh, anyway my mom uh, believes in the lord jesus so she went home to be with the lord and she's uh, with uh, christ now uh, but you know those moments really taught me how just having health and strength right like just feeling normal is such a big thing uh, and uh, when i pray like i do just thank the lord for things that seem normal because sometimes the normal is the precious that we don't recognize so the prayers of thanksgiving right uh, at times when we may be going through discouragement and disappointment it could be hard for us to say lord i thank you because we may feel that god you have not uh, given me the admission that i wanted or you did not uh, help me get the opportunity that i was uh, working so hard for or god i did not get the promotion or i did not get the recognition or things are just so difficult i have to work so hard you know there are complaints it's easier to uh, come before the lord with complaints and say oh, god what should i thank you for today nothing has happened i've prayed prayer believing prayer prayer of asking and receiving i asked but i didn't receive how can i even thank you but you know what when we begin to thank the lord and we look at all the things that we can be thankful for uh like i think to myself that your prayer may never even end <laughs> because of the prayer of thanksgiving there is so much to thank the lord for so we can just be led by the holy spirit recognize uh, the worthiness of god just take time to thank him lord thank you thank you because you are good thank you for your mercies thank you for your rescue lord thank you for your deliverance i thought that that opportunity is the one which is going to uh, lead me higher in my life but maybe you wanted to protect me from something that i could not foresee so i want to thank you lord even if something didn't work out for me i want to thank you you know so you just begin to thank the lord just begin to worship the lord just begin to uh, thank him for the so called normal things and say god i i just thank you i just thank you for this day for the sunshine for everything right and thankful is a beautiful way of ministering uh, unto the lord in prayer and god calls us to have these prayers of thanksgiving so uh, we will study later on even in the lord's prayer that uh, the lord jesus taught us he uh, tells the disciples pray in this way and he begins by adoration of the father and he closes by exaltation of the father so you know i call this the sandwich technique 
you begin by thanking god and then in between you know you have all your other parts where you are you uh, uh, you have your asking you have your supplication where you say god give us this day our daily bread uh, do this for us do that for us and you know you have all your other prayers in between and then finally you close off once again with thanksgiving and adoration so you know it's like a sandwich you have two loaves uh, sorry two slices of bread and in between you have uh, your patty or uh, whatever filling that uh, you want to have so uh, thanksgiving forms that sandwich right uh, in our uh, in the pattern of prayer so that's a way of uh, that's a kind of prayer that we can use in our daily lives uh, then you have the prayer of consecration okay so the term consecration primarily means dedication okay so when we dedicate something uh, we set it aside for that particular use for example you know we may have uh, crockery we may have uh, cutlery in our homes which uh, are expensive and are special they may have been gifts from someone so uh, in most homes at least i know in my home you know you just set it aside and you say hey don't use it every day we will use it on a special occasion when we have visitors over or you know christmas or easter you bring it out and then you know you you uh, serve in in that cutlery so you've dedicated it only for the special occasions in a similar way you know we as god's people we have dedicated ourselves to god so there are prayers which we can pray uh, in order to dedicate ourselves so what do those prayers look like those prayers may just you know god i i give you my life i surrender my life surrender yielding okay dedicating setting aside so we pray such prayers lord uh, i dedicate my life to you uh, and i'm sure you know many of us as we accepted christ we've prayed that prayer now uh, we've uh, committed our lives to god we may even have committed and said lord you know i dedicate myself for ministry i dedicate my talents lord i dedicate my time i dedicate every effort that i have every effort that i make for your glory so in that manner basically you're keeping it aside for the lord it's for you lord it's not for other things it's for you so that is dedication that is consecration and you know even though we may have done this as a one off thing uh, it's very powerful to dedicate ourselves and the things that that we possess or have been given to us from time to time because what are we doing in dedicating it to the lord we are uh, submitting those aspects of our life to god and we're saying god we want to see the work of your spirit uh, uh, upon that okay uh, and you know god begins to minister to us so uh, in this way we can every now and then as as a holy spirit um you know ministers to us we could let give it over to god so what could be an example of that you know maybe god might minister to you and say that yeah you know you've dedicated your life to me but uh, this talent that you have for singing can you dedicate it to me so you might pray a prayer and say okay god i am yielding myself i am surrendering this particular talent for your glory and i give it to you so what are you doing you're consecrating that talent you're you're dedicating that talent unto god so be led by god and uh, pray prayers of dedication you could also uh, pray prayers like uh, god i uh, um dedicate you know i i i consecrate my mind i consecrate my thoughts so uh, i've also heard uh, testimonies where people pray prayers of co uh, consecration and they see immediate deliverance because the moment you are sincerely dedicating you know your mind uh, or or yourself to god what happens many strongholds can be broken so it's a powerful thing to pray prayers of dedication upon yourself okay and just be led by the spirit uh, and pray prayers of consecration now one example of the time when jesus prayed a prayer of consecration or dedication was at the garden of gethsemane so if you uh, recall in that garden uh, he he was so overwhelmed he was so uh, you know uh, 
just disheartened by the fact that very soon he will have to go up on the cross okay and uh, there are many explanations to why he might have felt that way maybe the pain which he will be afflicted with uh, maybe the the uh, you know the mm, betrayal of mankind I, I mean he came to give himself for mankind but people working against him betrayal rejection you know he would have to go through all those hard uh, uh, realities that people go through in the world so was jesus feeling sad about that possibly yeah he could have uh, felt uh, felt that way uh, but in addition to all that you know one explanation which i like a lot you know jesus could have really dreaded the moment of separation from the father because we know that he was so united with the father at all times and on the cross he knew there would come a moment when the sins of the world will be put on him right and wh what does sin do sin separates us from god right so like i feel like that for me is a uh, an explanation which i uh, really can accept he would have dreaded that moment the most uh, and thought oh even for a few moments me being separated from the father how how can i take it and so maybe jesus because of that he would have prayed and said lord let this cup be uh, removed from me if possible but not my will but yours be done and he ultimately yielded surrendered dedicated himself to god and uh, we know that he was able to complete the work of redemption that he was uh, uh, sort of you know he he was uh, mandated to do and so today we are walking in salvation so that is consecration where you dedicate right things could be different in your mind but as you begin to pray uh, we can come to that point where we say god you know actually i don't want this uh, and i really hope it can happen that way but what happens when you're praying our heart and our will can get aligned to the will of god that's what happened to jesus right he kept saying let this cup be taken away let this cup not be given to me but as he's praying his will became aligned to the will of the father so it might take a while for us to actually yield or surrender our will to god but stay there stay put stay in prayer and we too can make that prayer of consecration ultimately and say okay god not my will but your will be done okay i give my life over to you i uh, release it to you so that is the prayer of consecration and it is very powerful all right uh, are you all okay are you doing fine are you getting something out of this Yes, Pastor. Yes. Oh, okay. Excellent. Okay. That's great. All right. So, any uh, questions? Please feel free to bring it up. I'll continue. If you do have, then just you know post in the chat here. So yeah, we've looked at the prayer of consecration. Now we'll talk a little bit about the prayer of agreement. In Scripture, we are encouraged to. pray with one heart about a cause or you know something that we want to receive from god and uh, even jesus taught on this kind of prayer of agreement matthew chapter 18 and verse 19 can one of us please read that uh, scripture please matthew 18 and verse 19 again i say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven thank you rosaline so we see there that any two right uh, ask in agreement god says that it will be done for them so people coming together in agreement that is powerful so is it powerful enough for an individual to pray very much it already is powerful okay and we will uh, we will see certain uh, aspects of believing prayer how to pray it and all that okay? and that makes an individual's prayer powerful but in addition to that uh, when we have the opportunity to 
connect with somebody and agree on on a matter that also is uh, you know powerful in its own way so the prayer of agreement uh, and here we notice any two of you so minimum so I, if you have only one other person to agree with you great right it it is so uh, uh, wonderful in that so sometimes you know people say oh i don't have too many people to to agree with me uh, i haven't shared this prayer request with with uh, a lot of others maybe there's just one family member with you that's fine two of you can pray together how about you know just husband and wife two of you and it makes your prayer powerful because you're able to agree on matters and pray in the name of jesus and jesus told us when you two of you agree and pray it will be done for you so we have to uh, learn right the the value of the prayer of agreement and we notice in the early church they knew this so uh, when the church was birthed in the book of acts uh, acts chapter 1 from that point on uh, the the people of god would gather together and they would pray together so uh, you see terms like one accord they were in one accord uh, and they were praying together and at that time the holy spirit was poured out on them and even later on even later on when the church was birthed finally and people were added to the church you know they what was one of the things that they did they prayed together so they Med, they learned the word of god from the apostles uh, you know they uh, uh, were sharing things with one another they were breaking bread house to house we we are told uh, and they were also committed to prayer okay so prayer was a very important aspect as a community so they were agreeing and praying and we would see the early church go through different challenges different stages uh, and whenever that happened also at one point you know peter and john they do a miracle and uh, the authorities are very angry with them opposition comes against peter and john but at that time what does the church do you notice that they again pray to god together so even when difficulties came persecution came opposition came the prayer of agreement they joined together and they prayed they called upon god so it's extremely powerful the prayer of agreement whether it is just one other person that we can agree with or uh, it is uh, uh, you know your church community that we can get together or let's say we are having a city wide church uh, sorry city wide uh, prayer meeting that's going on and people are agreeing on one thing to pray for god's blessing upon the city or to pray for god's blessing upon our leaders there is incredible power in that and prayer of agreement uh, is important uh, jesus taught about it the early church practiced it and we too can incorporate in our daily lives right so the prayer of agreement is another kind of prayer that we can uh, pray moving forward there is the prayer in the spirit now prayer in the spirit is another way of uh, describing praying in tongues all right so praying in tongues is what we are referring to uh, now uh, i'm not very sure about you know your knowledge about tongues uh, but then in scripture we are encouraged to do this okay and paul himself he says that i pray in tongues much more than any of you he says to the corinthian church so you can only imagine uh, how much he would have uh, used this kind of uh, prayer language and again this is an entire chapter so we will go in depth about praying in tongues later but just briefly for us here what is praying in tongues when the holy spirit was poured out on the disciples in acts chapter 2 uh, the prophecy of joel in chapter 2 was fulfilled okay and peter says that look the prophecy of joel joel said that in the last days uh, god said he will pour out his spirit on all flesh that is happening right now and when the spirit of god was poured out on the people one of the manifestations of the baptism in the holy spirit was speaking in tongues so people began to speak in tongues okay and later on from there this uh, uh, this pattern of prayer is seen in the church and you would read about different kinds of tongues also uh, in scripture now there is one kind of tongues which is 
that for personal prayer okay uh, and first uh, corinthians 14 14 describes this and says that we speak mysteries unto god we speak mysteries unto god okay so tongues is for us to communicate with god and that's what prayer is isn't it speaking to god we began this course by uh, defining what prayer is and we said communion with god speaking with god it's a two way communication so in the same way praying in the spirit is communicating with god and the only difference here is that we are speaking mysteries meaning we don't understand what we are actually praying and we are told in in scripture that it is the holy spirit who empowers us to speak in this language he helps us he gives us the utterances in uh, in romans 8 26 uh, we are told that so we are praying as led by the holy spirit okay and what is the use of this kind of tongues in which we are praying to god we are told in that same passage of first corinthians 14 that it edifies us okay edify means build up so when i pray in tongues or when i pray in the spirit what is happening to me i am spiritually building myself up in god and that is the the one of the benefits of praying in tongues but you know there are so many other benefits of praying in tongues so it is a in a simple way to put it in a simple way it is a personal prayer language which builds up your spirit okay so should i pray only in english should i only pray in my own language or the language that i understand yes we can pray in our own languages but god has also given us this other option to pray in heavenly languages which we don't understand but what is the benefit of it build up edifies us it builds us up so both we pray in our own languages and we also uh, pray in tongues okay so brother avdesh has a question here i think i'll answer it uh, before i go further uh, he says when holy spirit is giving other tongue and when other languages other language in other tongue or different okay uh, brother Av- avdesh i'm not very clear on what you have uh, asked here can you clarify like the what is it that you would like to know when we in the chapter uh, acts chapter 2 uh, there is a holy huh. spirit come and uh, holy spirit teach them the other language there because uh, they are speaking another another uh, language but the uh, yes. other tongue is another thing so uh okay they are speaking different languages that that i understood uh so i mean i didn't get the question sorry Uh, i think other than ma'am uh, i guess uh, ma'am I okay brother yeah, avdesh he wants ha, to ha. S- can i ma'am i think you uh, let him complete complete roslin roslin and then, and you, then can, you can you can add to that add to that okay. uh, yeah brother yeah, avdesh you want to complete uh, uh ma'am uh, actually uh, i think uh, other tongue is in other things and uh, other language is in other things So you're saying it's human languages, other languages? Yeah, 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 ma'am. Okay, okay, fine, fine, fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll I'll come to that. Rosalind, you were saying? Yeah, you could add, please. Add, please. No, ma'am. I just wanted to say what he means. Mm, like, mm, his mm. question, like I think he wanted to ask that uh, is there any difference between other language, other tongues, and tongues that later the disciples received? Oh, okay okay is there yeah. any difference yeah. between other language and tongues what mm. paul is okay. talking about okay. yeah okay thank you rosa thank, thank you rosa yeah see there is a difference okay so there is a difference between the acts 2 tongues and the first corinthians 14 tongues what is the difference it's very clear because acts 2 tongues the people who heard it they heard their own languages uh and god being glorified in their own languages so they are earthly languages acts 2 is earthly languages so the people are speaking in tongues but that tongues is a human language 
okay which the person who is speaking doesn't know but the hearer can understand now coming to first corinthians 14 verse 2 it says we speak mysteries unto god okay and then in that passage he he explains our mind is not edified okay but then speaking in tongues edifies us so act first corinthians 14 is heavenly languages which we don't understand so there is human languages there is heavenly languages now we won't go into the details of it there is a book which pastor has uh, uh, written apc publication you can get it from the uh, apcw.org/books uh, uh, it is called the gifts of the spirit in that the different kinds of tongues are explained okay and the uses so the acts two tongues is more of a sign to the unbeliever but the first corinthians 14 tongues it is a language of edification for the believer so what kind of tongues do i use for prayer it would be acts of sorry first corinthians 14 the heavenly languages tongues which i use as a prayer language to edify myself okay so i hope that much explanation clarifies things for us are you clear or are you still you're more confused dada avdesh is it okay uh, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah it is okay ma'am but uh, uh, i feel with the other tongue with uh, but uh, uh, i am not uh, no feeling with the other language uh, uh, spirit when uh, okay, i, I okay, was okay. in ara okay. bihar okay so, so i ha the time uh, uh, many yeah, of me. the pastor we are coming uh, we are pastor we are coming for the uh, holy spirit baptize and at that time uh, one of the pastor um, um, pray for me and after that uh, Uh, I uh, uncontrol myself and my hand also. So that time, uh, mm. Holy Spirit teach me the other tongue. But uh, what about other language? When uh, I can get the other language uh, uh, gift from the Holy Spirit? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Uh, so you see here, we read in uh, Romans eight. Okay, that the utterances. whatever we speak right it is given by god to us so uh, can i desire to speak in human languages i can desire but ultimately what i speak is what the holy spirit gives me okay so uh, at any yeah. point in time it's hard for me to tell whether i am speaking a heavenly language or a human language you got it yeah yeah but you can desire you can pray and you can say lord use uh, my tongues to minister to someone you could desire that and god can use it okay yeah but don't worry too much about oh what am i saying because very clearly scripture says that we can't understand it we can't right unless there is another gift of the holy spirit in operation which is called as interpretation of tongues yeah that's also mm. right okay all right so enough for us to understand that there are many kind different there are sorry not many <laughs> there are different kinds of tongues uh, one is earthly languages which is meant to be a sign to the unbeliever but the the one that we use as our prayer language uh, it's generally heavenly languages and uh, uh, i mean it could also be a human language but whatever it is we don't know what we are speaking but ultimately we are being edified through it okay so uh, that is about the uh, prayer in the spirit and uh, uh, you know is it okay to pray a lot in the spirit i would say yes and the benefit of uh, tongues is you can pray any time you can pray anywhere right uh, and uh, you you are able to do that so we'll talk about it later but just to encourage all of you like even you don't have to wait till the chapter on uh, prayer in the spirit comes uh, but like in my own personal life right the 
praying in the tongue praying in tongues all the time all the time i remember uh, there was one particular job where uh, um you know there was a lot of pressure uh, where i was working and i was constantly uh, under pressure and uh, even my desk the place where i sat uh, and there was a cctv camera uh, and you know my computer was there so you can't even talk or you can't make phone calls and all you like you're constantly 24 by 7 you're like under surveillance kind of a role and it was a good role i enjoyed it but uh, just being there Uh, and that that kind of a pressured environment working i remember while working on my computer i was constantly praying in tongues the whole day nearly like you know praying in tongues only take a break when uh, you, you have to go speak to someone or you're going for lunch or you're going for your bio break but otherwise you're working on something else but you can be praying in tongues right so similarly uh, uh, i mean if in an environment where you're so busy you can pray in tongues at a regular time it's very much possible so while you're driving while you're cooking while you know you're cleaning while you're doing anything else because you're not engaging your mind okay uh, you could actually be praying in tongues and that is a, a a privilege which god has given us so you can use this kind of prayer so often in everyday life and we already said what is the benefit your spirit man will be strengthened okay so you can go ahead and use this prayer language and uh, be blessed by it and uh, there's a comment here divya says uh, her testimonies of uh, missionaries who didn't know chinese language but was able to worship god and minister to people in chinese in the country of china yes 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 i think i've heard about it too uh, you know uh, and uh, lot of testimonies of early missionaries they would trust god when god called them to a particular land they would just go there and uh, just start praying in tongues and somebody would hear it it would be the tongues which is a sign right it would be a human language and uh, the person listening would answer them or help them things like that so yeah that's very interesting so uh, brother avdesh you have a question i see your hand raised there uh Okay. Can, uh, uh, if you don't, can, huh? Yes. Uh, Tell me, brother. Can anybody can anybody translate or interpretation in Hindi, any other language uh, yeah. of the other tongue? Yeah. So Because with the gift of the, the gift. Yeah. Please tell me. In the last month, uh, I was uh, in Ilahabad. There was uh, one of the prayer, and there was uh, one of a. <clears throat> Uh, 10 years old years uh, one of the little girl and uh, she was uh, translating in the hindi uh, other tongue mm. it's possible uh, brother that's what i'm saying if you have the gift of interpretation you can interpret it in any of your known languages it could be english hindi anything okay great Thanks. all right so uh that's about uh praying in tongues uh, and we will show sure, no problem we'll move on to the next prayer here uh this is the prayer of repentance and confession now uh, uh i'm sure all of us are quite well aware about this kind of prayer we know that jesus also uh taught us to pray you know to ask for forgiveness as we forgive those who sin against us so should repentance be a part of a believer's life daily life yes we are told in 1 john chapter 1 verses 7 and uh, 7 through 9 that if uh, we confess our sins then god is faithful to remove those sins away from us so every day you know it's okay if there is something that the holy spirit is convicting us about we can come before the lord and say okay god please forgive me for these things uh, and you know pray prayers of repentance pray prayers of confession before the lord and as god uh, uh, cleans us up you know we are able to move forward with a clear conscience right uh, and walk victoriously with god so prayers of repentance and confession uh, are important in a believer's life now while i was mentioning about uh, the prayer of thanksgiving 
I also told that you know sometimes we end up complaining to God. Now complaining is not good, definitely, uh, right? Complaining is not good. But at the same time, when there are things that are heavy on our hearts, you know how do we how do we uh, go about releasing that in prayer? Uh, in Psalm sixty-two and verse eight, we are told, "A trust in Him at all times, you people." Pour out your heart before Him. God is a refuge for us. Okay, so pour out your heart before Him. So the next type of prayer is the prayer of unburdening. Now, unburdening doesn't mean you come to God and you know like a punching bag. Yeah, this, this, this. I'm unhappy about this, uh, and you just complain, release your complaints, and go back. No, it's not like that. But it's more like um, being honest. Right, uh, being transparent before God uh, to a close friend, we would be uh, able to open up our hearts and share the things that make us happy and the things that make us sad, isn't it? So when there are things that are a burden on our hearts, we can come into God's presence and be honest and say, God, you know, I do feel the pressure of this. I am feeling disappointed, Lord, because these things are going on. Uh, or, you know, God, I don't know how I am going to uh, come through this situation uh, in my life. Or I'm wondering why... Uh, this has happened so basically you are being open with god and you know you're just pouring out your heart and let me tell you one of the ways that we can receive the peace of god uh, or rather exchange uh, our disturbance of our hearts for god's peace is by unburdening before the lord and uh, once again i told you right like there was this uh, time when my mother was very sick uh, just before uh, she went home to be with the lord and uh, at those times i remember going into prayer uh, and i really wouldn't know what to ask there was yes i was asking uh, for many things but at the same time my heart was so heavy and i remember a couple of days just before she passed away uh, i would go in I don't know what I prayed like for hour, couple of hours, just unburdening, pouring out my heart before the Lord, being honest and saying, God, this is how I feel. This is what is happening. This is what I'm uh, experiencing. And this is what I want. Like basically you're just releasing the everything from your heart to God because you trust him, you depend on him. And coming out of those moments of prayer, I still recall I would just come back with a sense of peace, even though there was so much of chaos around, right? And you're able to walk in that peace because you have shared your heart to uh, the Almighty God, and you know He is able to take you through any situation that you are going through. I mean, I'm sharing with you because that was one of the most challenging uh, times of my life. But I've experienced the blessing of the prayer of unburdening before the Lord, even when you don't know what to pray, just pray. You know, set that time aside, go in, share your heart to the Lord and you will experience you know, that lightness, that peace, that presence of God, right? And you walk from there. So uh, I think at this point, I would need to stop. We need to cover a few more kinds of prayer, but we can touch on it uh, tomorrow in our class. Uh, and any uh, thoughts or comments you just want to add? something to what I have shared, please feel free, you can do so. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah. So uh, it seems like uh, you're probably thinking about uh, whatever we have discussed today. Uh, and I would encourage you to uh, go back, meditate on these things once again. Uh, we can come back tomorrow. If you have any questions, we can pick that up first and then move into the rest of uh, what we have to cover. Uh, is that okay, everyone? Is that fine? Yes, Pastor. Yes, Pastor. Oh, okay, yes. sounds good. Sounds good. Yes. All right. So thank you, uh, and uh, we will uh, wrap up for now. And I would uh, encourage someone to please pray before we close today's class. Anyone?
can you lead us in prayer please let me pray uh loving father once again lord yes, we yes, thank please. you so much for this beautiful morning lord i thank you for speaking to us lord to your daughter lord thank you for helping us to know more about prayer interceding lord for others and lord i pray that lord what the things we have learned will not keep it in a pen and paper lord this to come lord we will see that uh, the life transformation in our life and we will see that uh, many people are touched by our prayer lord and especially i pray that lord you bless us that uh, every day every moment lord we'll talk to you lord like our father and mother lord and especially pray that lord you bless uh, all of us lord as we are learning lord bless us that lord we will also implement in our daily life master in our family master once again i thank you so much for speaking to us lord i thank you for the pastor lord thank you for helping her to uh, understand make us understand lord what is all about prayer lord we thank you especially lord for all of us lord thank you for this um, beautiful day lord in jesus name i pray amen Amen. amen amen thank you thank you subha subhashish for leading us um, god bless you have a wonderful rest of the day we'll meet again tomorrow amen amen bye for now thank you pastor thank you thank you rubika thank, thank you everyone thank you everyone bye Thank, Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.